Okay, so I'm here to talk to you about manufacturing. Why is that important? Manufacturing matters because there's dollars attached to it, because it is responsible for value added to our, our, our economy, and we, we employ a lot of people. So there's different ways we can make parts. One of those is machining, where we have a sharp cutting edge on a rotating tool. We remove material to reveal the desired geometry. So the photos here on the left and right show two milling operations, where we have a rotating cutter to produce nearly any geometry as we move that tool through space. We can also make parts by additive manufacturing, where we deposit material layer by layer in order to arrive at that geometry that we desire. The feedstock in that process can be metal wire, it can be metal powder, but in any case, we are depositing it in the locations that we desire to make parts. Once we make parts, we need to measure those parts. So what's shown here is a particular measurement strategy called structured light scanning, where we project straight lines on parts and then we can reveal their geometry by looking at the curvature in those lines. When we put those all together, we have a, an approach called hybrid manufacturing. So we deposit material to get close to the shape we want, we measure that, and then we use machining to get the final geometry. So I'm gonna tell you about the sequence of events required to make this part that starts with a um, digital model and ends with the final part. The additive technique we're using is called additive friction stir deposition. So we have a metal rod that's being forced through a rotating spindle against a surface. That generates frictional heat, which softens the material and enables us to put it down layer by layer. We have to use computer numerically, numerical control to position that tool relative to the workpiece. Um, so we have um, commands that we give to the machine in order to deposit the material to get the desired geometry. This shows a video of that deposition process. It's eight times faster, it's not quite that fast. Um, but we're putting material down in this aluminum layer by layer fashion in order to arrive at that preformed geometry that we want, which we will then proceed with. So that the geometry that we printed was in the lower right. Once we've printed the geometry, we measure it to see what we've got. Um, we use structured light scanning, as I mentioned, and we end up with a digital model of what we printed that we can then use to generate our tool paths to machine that part and get the final geometry. So this shows the tool paths that we generated to remove the material and reveal the geometry that we want. So this is a digital approach where we have a scan that's digital. We have tool paths that we present um, in order to remove material, and then we arrive at that geometry that we wanted from our digital model. These are the machining operations that were completed to make our final part. So on the left is a facing operation. Then we have uh, internal contouring operations, external contouring operations, and finally we end up with the part on the right that we wanted. So on the left we can see a picture of the part on the CNC, computer numerically controlled milling machine. So we've machined it flat in that operation. On the right is a photo of what it looks like. This used to be a video, but they made me take it out. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we have a digital model, we have a scan of what we printed, we have the thing that we wanted in the middle, and then we can compare those two to see if we got the right answer or not. This is a superposition, so a difference map between what we wanted and what we got, and the scale bar is plus or minus 250 micrometers, which is about plus or minus two hairs. So this is a, new, this is a second geometry here, this is a cone. And so we again use this deposition, measure, machine strategy in order to make that part which is relevant to hypersonics, um, which is an important area um, for research right now. So on the right is the tool paths that we followed to deposit this hollow cone. On the left is the result that we got after we deposited the material using additive, that additive friction stir deposition approach.
So on the right is what we got after we scanned it. On the left is a superposition of the model that we wanted and the scan that we got. So now we know the material that we need to remove by machining. And so I'll show you that machining approach next. So inside the machine tool, that's something that we can simulate. So we have a cutting tool that's removing material from the part. So the first thing that we did was remove the extra material from the base, and then we started on the cone, and we removed material from the bottom of the cone to the top of the cone um, by this machining operation. So here we see the, the deposited material mounted in the machine tool on the left, and then the, the final result after machining on the right. We can see that the part was mounted in what we call a three-jaw chuck. Oh, and by the way, we also have cutting teeth, so we use a lot of oral um, issues in, in machining. Um, so this is the result of that machining operation. We measured the surface finish. We also cut it open to see what was inside. So to put it all together, we saw that we can make parts in different ways. We can machine parts to remove material, get geometry. We can use additive manufacturing to add material, get geometry. Regardless, we're going to need to measure what we got. So we learned about structured light scanning. When we put all those techniques together, we call it hybrid manufacturing. And hopefully, we've done it in a smart way when we're all done. Thank you.